I'm find this guy, how many nights, how many days I've cried. So that night I'm sitting there, I'm laying in the bed, I'm shaking. I wanted to get some rest because to, tomorrow is a big day. I'm meet my dad. So I called him the next day. Sure enough, it was him. The most simplest, easiest phone call I've ever made. Except I gave him my sales pitch. I had to give him the disclaimer. <laughs> Quickly, like, look man, look brother. <laughs> Like, hey, my name is Norris. Hey, you know what? I graduated from college. I played in the pros. I was all American and, and, and so on and so forth. And I just kept, I'm like, I'm hammering them. I'm like giving them all the good stuff. Like, okay, now, do you want to buy? <laughs> well, for the low, low price of $19.99, you will have a son. And he just, he just was quiet. But he never denied it. And that was my first fear was that I would be rejected, that he would say no. But he accepted me in that moment. And I'm standing there and I'm telling him, man, you know, and then I said, you know what? And I says, and what I was really hoping for, and here comes the main pitch. This is the million dollar, boom. I'm like, listen, here was what I was hoping. I was hoping that if I had a big play on television, I was going to call out to you. And he said, that had never happened. I said, why? <laughs> he said, I don't watch TV on, I don't watch sports on TV. I'm like, what? <laughs> I got two shoulder surgeries, my, knee, man, my feet all busted up because, you know, by the time, I, uh, eventually, I ended up not qualifying, but my, uh, I hurt my foot because I was so big, hurtling. So I told him, I said, really, you don't watch sports on TV? He says, no. He says, I was very athletic as a young guy. They called him thoroughbred, big husky guy, 6'2", 6'3", 235, never lifted a weight. He said he didn't like to lift weights because he wanted to make his suits look nice and stuff like that. So just a side note. These were things that my, these were all things that my mom told me about my dad as the years rolled. Anytime I had a question, she always was honest with me. It wasn't a secret. She always told me he always dressed nice. When he got cleaned up, he wet his hair and he could put some stuff in and it curl up just like mine. <laughs> but I always used to, when I was coming up, I always dressed nice because of this, just so, and just in case if I'm in the mall or something, I might run into him. Okay? Just in case, you never know. <laughs> So I, was, I always tried to stay sharp. So we got to talking, and I told him what I needed to tell him. And he says, he stopped me, kind of stopped me, and says, he could hear the pain. He could hear the joy. And he says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Why do I share this with you? Because you may not want to play football. That's not you. And you may not have a dad that you're chasing. But you do need to make a decision. You do need to decide. And so before, as we wrap up, I'm going to talk to you about five characteristics of a successful decision and what that looks like as you get ready to go into your off season. You got from now until when you guys come back, August, September? August. So this applies to everything. I just took it to the extreme. But this is something that you can take with you. First thing you got to do you got to have sharpened focus. That's me, 1993, about to run a hurdle race. That's focus. That's, that's not just focus. That's sharpened focus. You guys want to know the difference between focus and sharpened focus? I'm going to tell you. Here's focus. Girl, I'm about to go over to the library. That's focus. You want to hear what sharpened focus is? Sharpened focus is, girl, I couldn't even find you last night. Where were you at? Because she don't need to know where you are. You over there taking care of your business. That's sharp in focus. You know the difference of when you're on track based off of the decision because all of a sudden, sometimes you're going to have to find yourself alone. You're going to have to find yourself dialed in so you can jump into the race. And not everybody. It's always about character and your integrity and the things that you're doing when nobody else is around. How locked in are you? Because there's always going to be a party. The, deci the, the, the decision you got to make is, after the party, are you going to feel good about the fact that you went to the party, or are you going to regret it the next day because, why? Because there was something that I was supposed to be doing that I didn't do. But I still went to the party. Y'all saw me. I did it. <laughs> right? The next is, you need to get clarity of your mission. we got to have a plan. Get clarity of the mission. What are you going to do daily? What's the plan? Make sure that you huddle up every day or make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. All right? So that way you can, here's the thing. The football, the football represents your dream. 
your purpose, your destiny. The idea here is to make sure that we move your dream and your destiny that way towards the goal line. But you can't do it if you got the wrong people in your life. You gotta make sure you get some Randy Mosses out here that can just flat out fly and catch the rock. You gotta make sure you got some interference in here that can block, that can stand up for you. That's your family. Those are your tough, that's, those are your closest friends. But at the end of the day, it's you, you're the quarterback. You've gotta navigate your life and you've gotta take care of that dream. You gotta harness all of your energies. And once you get clarity of mission and even the people that are around you, once you know then things can start moving forward. The next thing is discipline. Because once we understand, number one, now we've got, now we've got a vision of what we want to do. We've got the mission. Now you've got to get in the game. You've got to get in the game. That's when you get to, you graduated, you got your job, you got a job, you suit it up, and you've got to be disciplined. And all discipline is is this. Do it the same way every day the right way. Just be disciplined. And that's how you stay in the game. The guys on Sundays, the guy, this is me up in, in, in Winnipeg, the guys that get to play on Sundays, those are the people that have submitted to the process. Everybody knows somebody went to high school with a kid that's probably better than Michael Jordan. Everybody went to high school with a kid that's probably better than LeBron, except LeBron did what? He got disciplined and now he's in the game. Don't work your way out of the game because you can't get disciplined. The same way every day don't change it don't change a thing these are checks and balances so that way you know am i did i make a good decision you know and you also got to understand what your gift is please don't have a far-fetched idea that i have this dream out here and you're not gifted to perform it find out what your gift is and then that way you you can feed into your dream and what it is that you want to have happen once you've done that, then you're going to start seeing increased production. What is that? In your case, you're going to start seeing better grades. Okay? For me and my business and what it is that I do, I've been doing this for 20 years. Okay? I've been telling this, sharing this story for over 20 years. And every year, it gets a little better, gets a little better, gets a little better. Okay? It's a little better. And that's when you're going to know that, you, that you're on the right track. You're going to see Oh, wait a minute, I had a 3-1, now I've got a 3-5, now, now I'm on the dean's list, and Dr. Glenn is standing up there hugging you, y'all jumping around like, give yourself food. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Increase production, results. And last, once you get to that point in anything, in everything in this life, We've, you know, so many experiences. And I talk about mastering the human experience. It's more than just the football for me, okay? It's more than just whatever it is that you want to do here. Because once you're done here, that's just the beginning. There's so many things. You might want to climb that mountain 10 years from now. Some of you, how many, anybody gone up there and climbed that mountain yet? Put that on your list to do. That's an experience that you can master. You want to get to mastery. You don't want to just live. You want to master you want to be a master of it. You want to be great. What is mastery? Winning. What is mastery? A great paycheck every Friday or every other Friday. You become great at what it is that you do once you get to mastery. It's the championship. It's your finish line. For me, part of my finish line is this book that, that Dr. Glenn talked about. I'll close with this. For a number of years, I never talked about my dad until just last November when I would speak. I was in New Orleans, and it hit me. Like, I never have ever mentioned my father in any of my talks. And I was in the midst of writing this book and ran into a block. And two women walked up to me at the end of the conference in the back of the room. I was shaking hands with them. And one of the ladies says, you know, you got happy. You, things changed when you talked about your dad. And I thought about it, and I knew that. I could feel the energy in the room, and that's when I knew. That's when I knew that this was the direction that I needed to go for my business. This was the, this was the message that people like yourself, people all over the world, it doesn't matter how successful you are, we all have voids in our life. It may not be fatherlessness. It may not be 
where you don't have a relationship with your mother. I've talked to countless people that have parents that don't have great relationships. I, I, have a, I had a student, I taught television productions for a number of years. I have a student, his father is a millionaire, a multimillionaire over and over. He said to me, Mr. T, do you realize that I have a better relationship with you than with my millionaire father? Those are his exact words. Don't just move through and just coast. Make a decision. Make a decision. Don't just master A&M. Master all of this stuff. Whatever it is that you do in fatherhood, motherhood, parenthood, all of it. Master all. Every scenario that comes, put this to work for you. Get sharp in your focus. Get the clarity of mission. Get disciplined. Do it the same way every day, the right way. And you're going to start seeing results. You'll see it in everything that you do. Your kids will start acting right. Your grades will be right. And then after, all, after a while, mastery. Mastery. Kim Blanchard says this as it relates to business. And some of you might be business leaders at some point. If you can get to a point of mastery, your cash registers will go ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Thank you. Give yourself three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm going to have to remember that for the classroom. I'm going to, I'm going to walk into a classroom maybe before the semester is over. I'm going to see if I'm going to have everybody clap for that. Get you motivated and hyped up for the test, for the, for the final exam. Um, as uh, as Norris, and I'm going to call him Norris because we grew up together. We were counting those stories. And every week where we were family, we grew up with family. I remember when they left. I uh, never really understood why. And we didn't reconnect until much later afterwards in Milwaukee. And ended up my part of my family ended up moving to Milwaukee. My grandmother and brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, my brother got brothers and sisters, sisters who are still there. And um, so we reconnected and um, but the, a lot of the de intimate details of those stories I had not heard and hadn't heard. And so it uh, was enlightening to hear that. But I also hope that, you know, there's something in there that you got that um, will motivate you to be your best and talk about this collectively as a university. What you do is going to make us great. I'm talking to the faculty, I'm talking to the students, talking to the staff. Collectively, what you do makes us great. Individually, what you do, when you follow these principles that we talked about, you can, you're going to make yourself great. And that's good for everybody. It's good for our society and everything else. So thanks, Dar, for that. Um, come on up. As we do, we uh, want to make sure that we give you a proper memento, a memento of, of what you did here, something you can put on your, your desk along with all your other trophies and awards and everything else that's there. And remember they're not. Yeah, <laughs> what you were here. But uh, all right, so. And it reads. College of Engineering, Technology, and Physical Sciences presented to Norris Thomas, Dean Speaker Series, April 28, 2016.